I'm recording now. Welcome everybody to Gold Coast Frick Comp November of 2020. Um, should be a fun night tonight. We got about 25 images covering the whole gamut of categories, so it should be pretty interesting. Um, our judges for tonight, I'm going to go by my screen that's up there for who's where because they keep jumping around. And, um, first on the list is the president of the Channel Islands Professional Photographers Association. He was awarded the Granite Award for PPC's International Print Competition, which means he got skunked, <laughs> which is not the first time for most of us. Um, but Mr. Larry Skibiski, thank you, Larry, for being here. And if you guys need help with Gold Coast next year, Larry has volunteered to step up as vice president. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when you volunteer to help, Larry, you get volunteered big time. Yeah, what's one more, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and we also have this guy named Tim Matheson, who is the head honcho of the print competition for PPC. He's also a what juror chairman or what what is your title for PPA? Jury chairman. Jury chairman. So he runs he runs the show for the jury room. Um, he's been around PPC for a little while and PPA for a little while, about mm -hmm. twelve years, thirteen years. Yeah, times times uh, three. Four. <laughs> um, <laughs> He teaches the jury, the judging class for PPC, and I highly recommend everybody take it, even if you've taken it already. Scott and Janine, Sandra. After three years, your status expires. You got to take the class again. Mine's been over three years, and they keep calling me, and I won't. I, I just took it, and it, it's great. It, it opens your eyes. Anyway, Mr. Tim Matheson, and last but not least, we have Daryl Preeb from the Channel Islands Professional Photographers Association. And are you on the board, Daryl? Not this year. You bailed out, huh? Bailed. Or yeah. you got bailed out? <laughs> um, Daryl's a fantastic photographer down in the Channel Islands area and rocks. I've seen his work, judged his work. In fact, I've judged just about everybody's work, so it's fun. Um, if you haven't judged, take the opportunity to take the class and judge. It helps your work as well as um, opens your eyes a little bit. So when the judges say something about your image, you don't take it personally. You just go, oops, yeah, I missed that one, didn't I? Okay, we are going to get started. So let me go ahead and share screen, make sure everybody can see it. Terrible. And minimize the picture down to here. And everybody can see Shirley right now? Shirley, you just. Surely we can. Okay, judges, anybody that cannot see it. Okay, this just helps to kind of get your monitor calibrated a little bit. Um, with the Shirley, you get the black and white scale on the right hand side, and then you got the color scale and the color boxes on the left. Um, so you can see what you got going on and just kind of base your scores off of this. And a reminder, this is being done via Zoom. So not every image is gonna be crystal clear via Zoom. And sometimes the color comes out kind of wonky. Um, if there's any question, just ask me and I'll tell you whether it's in focus or not. Well, they're all in focus, so. Any questions on that? Nope. Nope. <clears throat> okay. We are gonna start with the first category, images of animals created in the studio setting or outdoors. Man-made objects are permitted in the image. And the first image in the animal category is aptly named, aptly named. And just a reminder, if everybody could mute themselves other than the judges so that we don't accidentally um, spit out things we don't wanna hear. Did 
Janine, when you get the scores, if you can shout it out. Does that mean that I'm not supposed to be muted? <laughs> <laughs> that would help. The score is 78. 78. And let's go ahead and start with Larry. All right. Um, I did give this a 78. Um, the um, initial thing that I saw when it popped up on the screen was, was the underbelly there. And I had to look over to the left to realize that there was a face there. Uh, it just took me a second, but uh, his face is real cute, except I can't see any eyes there. And I, I do want to see his eyes. Uh, I can tell whether he's angry or happy or sad or whatever, but uh, I, I can't because I cannot see his eyes. Um, it also goes out of focus a little bit too much towards the, the tail area. Maybe a different f-stop would have worked better. And uh, the lighting is uh, very, um, well, it's organic because it's natural lighting outside, but uh, it's looking in the shadow area, a little bit blocky under his chin. But uh, other than that, uh, it's a cute pig, but uh, I wouldn't want him in my backyard. Uh, but uh, anyway, that's about it. Okay. Any other comments from other judges? The only thing I would add to that is I'd like to see more space around him. He's virtually fills up the frame. So it's really hard to get a feel for, you know, the surrounding area What the story. Um, you know, his face is really dirty. So he's been crowding around in something, just a little bit more space could add to the, add to the story. Okay, thank you. Okay, the scores are 78. Next up is Blackwater White Swan. Blackwater White Swan. There we go. Okay, and I do round these numbers, correct, Michael? Yes, please. Okay, that would be 80. Scores an 80. And Tim, if you could be first tonight. On this uh, I one. gave this an 81. Um, from a composition standpoint, that swan is almost dead center. But that's not the problem for me. The problem for me is I would have been much higher if I'd been able to see his eyes. And I don't know what kind of lighting uh was involved in this if it was just natural lighting but i think um, it's it's just i like the feel of the water behind it uh, i like the way the uh, the detail and the feathers of the swan uh, i just wish i could see the eyes okay. i like the cropping uh it's just it, that puts that head almost dead center any other comments from other judges okay the scored an 80. Next up is It's What's for Dinner. It's What's for Dinner. Thank <laughs> you. 
Daryl, did you send yours through? Yes, I did. Okay, I'm sorry. It must have flashed by when another one came up and I didn't see yours. Could you send it one more time, please? I can. That Thank just sounds you. so official. The score is 81. 81. And Daryl, you're up first on this one. All right. Well, this is an enjoyable image. And I uh, am really enjoying trying to figure out what that little crab-like critter is in the bird's beak. I like the, uh, the side lighting, kind of rear and from the, from the rear and the left side. It adds uh, interest and dimension to the bird. The composition with the bird is pretty good, a little bit centered, but uh, still there's plenty of room for the bird to move into the picture. Uh, the pose is nice with him uh, raising his right leg, moving forward. The um, only difficulty I have is maybe a, a little bit of light could have been added in post uh, to give us just a little more light on the bird's um, uh, head and maybe on that critter in its beak. And then maybe um, a bit of a vignette would have helped focus the viewer on the subject. My score was an 83. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay, that scored an 81. Next up is Brew with Mustache. Brew with Mustache. The score is 82. 82. Larry, you're up first. Yeah, I gave this an 80. Um, when it first came up, it, it seemed a little bit uh, bright to me, but the more I looked at it, uh, it, it, it works really well with this. The, the white dog fading into the background there goes, goes into a soft kind of focus thing. Uh, I like the uh, presentation. That's a different kind of a, a matting that I haven't seen very often and I liked it. Uh, matches the dog's eyes very well. It just makes his eyes pop even more. Um, I, I, I didn't uh, catch the name of the dog. Uh, what was it, Mike? Brew, B-R-E-W. B-R-E-W. See, that, that, that kind of got by me a little bit, but I got the mustache part <laughs> and uh, that's really cute. A um, couple things. Um, down at the the bottom below the dog's uh, chin there. There's there's some kind of a discolored, I, I know you wanted to fade in, the maker wanted to fade into white there, but there's some kind of a, a darker line across there, and I'm not sure what that is. Um, maybe it's a, a tabletop or a top of a chair or something, but there's something there that uh, needs to be taken out a little bit better. Um, other than that, I think it's a very, very cute image. I'm sure that uh, the maker will love having this on the wall, especially if that's their dog. That's it. Any other comments? I just have one. Um, I didn't care for the presentation. I gave it a 78. Uh, this is really a really true high key. And when you put those borders on there like that, it really draws your attention, for me anyway, draws the attention away from the dog's face. And also I think uh, that kind of grain effect all the way around the dog's head, particularly across the top, uh, you could have minimized that. If you're going to do a, 
a presentation like this, take that color of the eye or something closer and just give me a key line around. But, I mean, this is really a nice high key portrait. And I think uh, the uh, the border for me uh, is a creates conflict. I don't know where my eye wants to go. But it's a beautiful photograph. I just think the presentation is what brought it down. Okay. Daryl, you got anything? Well, I was uh, thinking about what Tim was saying. If there would have been a band of black around the border, uh, it would have carried the image, the high key image, much better. So other than that, I agree with both uh, Larry and, and Tim. Okay. That's Gordon 82. Next up is Pelican Airways. Pelican Airways. The score is 83. 83. And Tim, you're up first. Okay, I gave it an 82. I really like this. Uh, from a composition standpoint, your horizon's in the right place, the sun's a good placement. And the timing, you get the um, seven pelicans. Uh, I mean, I don't know how many shots were actually created uh, before you got the right one, but I like the color and, you know, it's just a nice, soft, Evening photograph, I think it's done very well. Okay. Any other comments? Okay, that's Gordon 83. Next up is Good Dog. Good Dog. Seventy-eight. Seventy-eight. Daryl, you're up first. All right, I scored this image a seventy-nine. Um, at first glance, it has a, a nice strong cuteness factor being a dog. And the world's going to the dog, so it's very timely. Sorry. <laughs> that was a, a joke going to the dogs. Um, for me, the painting strokes um, uh, just, just aren't there in terms of a quality painterly portrait. Um, and then the neon scarf is a shocking bit of an accessory, really kind of grabbing the eye and you don't quite know what to do with it. Uh, jumping between the scarf and the dog's eyes. So all in all, I, it's a little bit confusing of an image for me. And I scored it a 79. Any other comments? I, I was at a 77. And I, I was, I, I thought about even going lower. Uh, it's just from a photographic standpoint, um, it just doesn't make, doesn't tell me a story that the, the brush strokes are too precise. Uh, you never see a dog that smooth and that uh, bandana is becomes a subject matter. And, um, you know, the, the person needs to be a little bit more, you know, free with the strokes, make it look more natural because it really doesn't look natural here. Okay. Score to 78. And the last in the 
category of animals is vote for me. Vote for me. Tim, did you score? Yes, I did. Okay, I'm sorry it didn't pop up. Did you get it? Yes, thank you. 83. 83. And Larry, you're up first. I gave this an 85. I really love this uh, image of this dog here. He's he looks happy and he's, it's a great pose. Um, I love the presentation, it, it really works well. The backdrop works well. Um, I would have gone a little bit higher, uh, except that it looks to me like this dog is, his back legs are floating in the air. Um, I, I'm not seeing a foundation for him to be standing on there. It just kind of bothered me a little bit, uh, enough where I, I did not go higher than 85, but uh, this is a really great image. Okay, any other comments? Okay, moving right along. We're gonna to go to the illustrative category, or as Roger Danes like to say, the illustrative category. And basically it's a catch-all section. So first up is egrets in my dream. Egrets in my dream. Score is 81. 81. And Tim, you're up first. Okay, uh, I gave it an 82. Uh, I, lo I love the painterly effect. And I would have been a lot higher had that uh, egret on the right, upper right corner, not be there. Um, because you've got a really strong point of view or a, a position there on subject matter. It really kind of diminishes those three. And from a composition standpoint, the three on the left side are flying into the image. And uh, to me, the, uh, the big egret is more of a distraction. But I love the effect. I think the presentation is done very well. I gave it an 82. Any other comments? Yeah, I would add that um, egrets are challenging birds to shoot because they are essentially a reflector for the sun and shooting them definitely means stopping down at least to stop. So uh, what we have here is much of the texture and tonality of the big egret, the great, the great one on the upper right um, is we've lost all the detail, but especially the other three, the white wings have little or no detail at all which really distracts from the image quality to me. Uh, along with Tim, I really do enjoy that 
mid the mid range of that painted background is nice. The bottom of the right. Score, uh, I gave this a, a an eighty and would have gone much higher if it had not been overexposed on the birds, and the bottom right corner of the painting had um, been, I guess, repaired would be the right word for it. Okay. Any other comments? It just, I, I agree with everything both judges said. There's just one area that I see that is looks a little bit uh, like it doesn't need to be there and it's down below that egret on the right and just in front of him a little bit towards the bottom of the image. There's a, a bright white area, a couple of them actually, that uh, maybe that could be um, toned down a little bit. Okay, thank you judges. Next up is Grandma's Roses. Grandma's Roses. Eighty-four. Eighty-four. And Daryl, you're up first. Righty. A lovely image. Lovely tabletop of flowers. I like the lighting coming in from the upper left. And I love the um, vase, the arrangement, the shawl type material at the bottom. I actually would have a little difficulty making a suggestion to the artist on this one. I think it's a, a very enjoyable image. Perhaps the table top is looking a bit um, scratched up with white and maybe it could have been darkened as we move through the picture from the left to the right. But other than that, I think it's just a terrific image. I uh, scored this in 88. Any other comments? I have one. Um, I agree with everything Daryl said. It's a beautiful image. Maybe toned down just slightly on it, but uh, overall. Um, and then uh, right under the teapot's spout there, there's a couple little flower pieces that are sticking out, which kind of don't need to be there. Maybe if uh, you burnt, you know, uh, remove those out of there, I think it might be better as far as that spout uh, area. That's scored in 84. Next up is Vaquero style. Vaquero style. Is the image all the way on, Mike? I'm yeah. I'm it, it looks like it's zoomed in too much. It's actually. Let me try something real quick. Okay, that's full size on the image. Yeah, there's a frame around it so you can see that it's all of the image. Yeah. I, I'm only getting the frame. Um, let me see here. I can't go any smaller. Is, is there a right and left side to the frame, to the border? Yes. I'm not getting that. I'm just getting an orange uh, key line. That's the border on it. Okay, so the orange is the okay. Yeah. Got it. So there is no nothing there is no outside of it, you're correct. Got it. Okay.
score is 78. 78. And Larry, you're up. Okay, I did score this a 78. Um, I, I'm not sure where to look here in the image when it uh, popped up. Um, I think that there's too, many, too much detail, too many subjects going on at once here. I don't know whether to look at the horse's head or uh, the uh, uh, saddle area of the uh, horse there. I'm, it's a little confusing towards for me. Um, I love the color uh, in here. The color harmony is great. Looks really good. Um, I would add a border to this also, and maybe not as uh, thick a uh, stroke line there, but uh, this needs to be brought in with something, some type of border around it to bring it in and maybe even crop out uh, parts of the image that don't work with it here, like the uh, maybe just concentrate on the saddle area, or I guess that's the, uh, the, the, the subject of this is the uh, Vaquero style. Um, but that's about all I have to say. Any other comments? I was at a 76. Um, uh, there's so many things in here that create a distraction um, with the, all the piping that's in the back along the railing and the fence and then the, the rope and the blue pants and the chaps and his white shirt. There's no place for uh, an eye to land for any kind of uh, feel to get the uh, to understand what the uh, title is. Um, I think the title would have been very appropriate if we had seen the entire horse and the rider uh, to kind of get a better feel for what this is. Uh, presentation um, it doesn't really say anything. There's so much distraction. I don't I don't see it. I think it's you're on the right track. You're 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 looking at details, but I want to see the story as well. And uh, I j all I see are these different spots that drag my eye around. I gave it a seventy-six. I scored this an eighty, and I agree with what uh, uh, Tim and Larry have said. I think I just wanted to add that a big part of the busyness of this image comes from the bright lighting. It really should be printed down a stop or two. And I think the light focused more on the style, the Vaqueros style. Is it the silver bit in the mouth? Is it the uh, lariat and his chaps? Uh, so you, this, there's, a, there's several stories here and you could shape them with uh, better lighting to tell the viewer what you really wanted him to focus on. Thank you, judges. And the last image in illustrative is watching sunset. Watching sunset. Daryl, can you send yours one more time, please? I would love to. One more time. Thank you. Sorry. No say problem. Hi to you, and say hi to your wife for me. I see her in the background. Oh, you've embarrassed her. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> the score is 82. 82. Yeah, I'll relieve her. <laughs> oh, man. Um, Mr. Tim, you are up. I gave this an 83. I really like it. Um, I think composition's good. I love the way the color just kind of fades away to the top. One suggestion is next time you're doing this shot, uh, use a neutral density filter so you can lengthen your exposure so you don't have all those various spots of the water, uh, waves breaking and you know the surf running up, where you get a nice soft blur, but you still get the impact uh, of the color in the sky. But the composition's great. 
presentation. Uh, the only thing I would recommend in a presentation is not use a gray or a white um, key line. Uh, that has a tendency to draw uh, your eye away. Take your color picker and find a color in there that complements but doesn't uh, compete. Okay. Any other comments? Okay, I scored an 82. Next category is the landscape category. And everybody pretty much knows what a landscape is, so we won't go into details on it. First up is Escalante Slot Canyon. Escalante Slot Canyon. Hold on, I just lost the screen for some reason here. Okay, I don't know if you could hear me. I lost my screen for a moment. So Larry, if you had given your score, I unfortunately didn't see it. My computer's giving me a little bit of a headache here. Good old Adobe. I resent it. Um, okay, I've got it. So the score is 80. 80. And Daryl, you're up first. All right, I scored this image a 79. And I, for me, what distracted so much from the beauty of that canyon was the treatment here. It just seemed to be much too strong. I'm not even gonna give it a name. Um, it's not even an HDR, it's, it's more than that. Um, and then added to that, you have the darker rocks contrasting with the white bottom of the trail. All in all, I just did not enjoy the treatment. Okay, any other comments? The only comment that I have is um, I'm not, I don't know about the treatment, what was done, but the, there's no depth. All the values of all the rocks from the right in the very foreground, all the way to the background for all intents and purposes are the same. So you don't have that depth, you know, that kind of way that kind of takes your eye in through the picture. So it's right. very flat in that respect. And I gave it a 78. Any other comments? Okay, scored an 80. Next up is St. Andrew's Sky. St. Andrew's Sky. <laughs> Mike, is that sharp? Um, it does not appear to be sharp on my screen. Okay. That answered my question. Sorry. Not that score dummy. Daryl, did you send yours already? Yes, I did. Would you like it again? Yes, I'm sorry, please. No problem. Thank you. Score is 76. 76. And I lost my place. Larry? I think it's mine, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I scored this a 76. Um, and the main reason is that... Uh, as someone mentioned that uh, it's very soft. Uh, it does not appear to be in focus here. Um, I 
also I, I'm looking at the horizon line and maybe it's just me, but it seems maybe it's an optical illusion. The uh, right side seems a little bit higher than the left. Um, there's just, it needs to be, uh, well, first of all, it needs to be in focus. Uh, it's a nice scene, could have potential. Uh, the presentation is good. Um, other than that, uh, I have no more comments. Okay, any other I comments? Would, I would add one more comment. Uh, obviously the focus is crucial, but it doesn't really have a single subject. It has a foreground, has a midground and um, extended midground and, and then a background, but none of it stands out as a subject. So that's really holding this image back also. Time of day is also an issue for me. Okay. Next up is the living galaxy. The living galaxy. Eighty-seven. Eighty-seven. Mr. Tim. I gave it an eighty-six, and I'm not sure that I didn't underscore it. Um, you know, digital photography has afforded us an opportunity to photograph deep space. Um, much easier than it used to take. And, um, you know, I think the composition is beautiful. Uh, the tree in the lower left corner presentation is done well. And just the right exposure of the uh, Milky Way so you can really see what's involved. And, uh, you know, this, this was beautiful. Uh, I'm going to challenge it. Okay. If I underscored it. I'm going to raise my score to 90. Okay. And Daryl? I scored it at 85, and I, I just love the image. The silhouetted tree and hills, uh, perfect frame for the diagonal Milky Way. Uh, I uh, scored it at 85, and when I did that, I thought, well, it probably could be up towards the 90 range, but I was concerned about the glow on the horizon, and I think there's a little blurring around the hilltop there um, to the left. So that glow kind of kept me from going uh, too much higher. And I think the artist could take that down a bit easily enough. So I'm willing to go up some though. Larry. I scored this in 89. I, I really liked uh, this initially had great impact. Uh, very well done with the, uh, the uh, border and key lines. Um, Daryl had mentioned that the uh, over in the lower left there that along the, the uh, hilltop there, there's some kind of blurriness going on there. Um, I took it as, as being fog, but uh, I'm not, I, I really can't, well, because it does stretch across there over to the tree and over to the other side of the tree, a little bit of misty look there. Um, so I scored at 89, I was tempted to go 90, and then I wanted to hear what the other judges had to say, so I may go up also. Rebuttal. Well, in rebuttal, I don't, the, the, um, the, the glow at the bottom, it could be, I mean, it's really getting hard anymore to go to a place and get good deep sky without some glows from someplace. And that's just the way, you know, it can be, you can take it down. But I think in this case, it doesn't bother me one bit because it, for me, it adds a little bit of realism to it. Um, yeah, I'm going to, I'm upping my score to 90. Okay, let's rescore.
89. Next up is Waterfall Lower Emerald Pool. Waterfall Lower Emerald Pool. Oops. We just switched images, Mike. Yeah, I had the wrong image up. Which one's correct? This one that's up right now. Can you title again, please? Waterfall Lower Emerald Pool. Seventy-nine. And Daryl, you're up first. All right, I scored this a an eighty-two, um, primarily because I uh, really enjoyed the central part of the image with the uh, the uh, autumn colors in the trees and and in the rocks. What held me back was how bright the under. I don't know what to call that, but the under rock on the right, the upper right, is just much too bright. The clouds are uh, much too bright and not of much interest. And so those areas really needed to come down. I also understand that the name of this place must be the waterfall at the Lower Emerald Pool, but it's not perhaps the best um, title for it especially as the waterfalls is a, just a bit of a trickle when this was taken. Okay. Any other comments? I'll have a couple things. Um, everything that Daryl mentioned uh, does need to be uh, being added a little bit more to tone down those clouds and those upper rocks on, on the right. And, uh, but uh, he did mention the, the title and I was confused. I kept, kept looking for a pool here and didn't see it uh, just the same as Daryl. Uh, that border um, doesn't really work because it seems like with the same tonalities as the rocks and things that you're, it doesn't keep you in the image. I want to stay in the image, uh, enjoy those colors, but uh, it, it keeps drawing me out to the sides there. That's about it. Okay. A score to 79 and that completes our landscape category. Okay, um, apparently I didn't make a slide for the nature category, so. Where's the one before this one though, Mike? Um, it'll come in later. We had a change in um, categories for it. Okay, we're gonna go to the nature category and first up is bird and brush, bird and brush. The score is 80. 80. And Larry, you're up first. I scored this in 81. Uh, I, I really appreciate anybody that goes out and tries to shoot these little guys. Um, it's not something that I've ever done. So I, I do appreciate it. The, the degree of difficulty is uh, off the charts uh, for me anyway. But uh, the. Um, this bird has, has its great sharp focus. I can see his eye, a little catch light in his eye. Looks really great. You can get that feeling of, of motion instead of just frozen in space. Um, there's a couple things there. Uh, you've got 
a little bit of a distraction, I think, with the the blue uh, up in the upper uh, just right of center along the uh, the, the uh, key line there, and right above the bird's wings. Maybe tone those down a little bit, uh, and also down below. Um, good color harmony with this plant in the uh, the background, and uh, the bird itself just really pops out there because of its sharp focus. That's about it. One comment. Any other comments? Yeah, one comment, Mike. The um, the bottle brush there just looks soft in its focus, and I it looks like it's in the same plane as the hummingbird, but perhaps it's not. Um, and there's a significant amount of the hummingbird that is out of focus, and I, I guess we're to estimate that it's due to the shutter speed the photographer chose but it seems to be a little bit too slow for the wings. Uh, you can connote uh, motion with uh, not having that much of the wings disappear. And also the tail wings are really um, distracting to be that blurry. Those were the things that kept me from scoring it higher than the 79 I gave it. Okay. Any other comments? Okay, the scored an 80. Next up is bird butt model. Bird butt model. <laughs> Spoonbill. Score is 82. 82. And Mr. Tim? I was at 80. Um, I, you know, it's, this isn't one of the most familiar ways of looking at a bird that's on a tree stump or something like that, but um, it definitely gets your attention. Uh, it's sharp. It's got very colorful. Uh, I like the way the one leg is just kind of hanging off the side. Uh, again, it's just, you know, captured what he saw, and I think it's what she saw. Um, I like it. Uh, it's not the most dramatic picture, but certainly worthy of a merit. And would you score it? 80. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Just a brief one. I scored this in 83. Uh, being a bird photographer, I've heard all too often, don't shoot the butts. Get them from the side or the front. <laughs> but I like this image, doggone it. It has a lot of impact. First off, I never knew what that spoonbill's rear end looked like. And that is really quite a colorful design nature has provided us. So I really found it an enjoyable, fun image. Hey, any other comments? Uh, just one. Uh, I, I'm not sure if this is the best crop for this. And I keep looking at it, trying to decide what would be better. Um, if there's more of this beautiful blue sky around it, you might play around and uh, try a different crop on this. Um, it, it just seems a little bit too high in the uh, in the image here. Okay. Thank you, judges. I scored an 82. Next up is feeding time. Feeding time.
score is 84. 84. And Daryl. All right. I really enjoyed this image. I scored it an 87 and really wanted to go higher, but um, it just has a few shortcomings that could easily be corrected. The mother bird is just phenomenal. Beautifully sharp and detailed and not over sharpened. Gorgeous colors, nice tonality there. The baby bird, however, has a lot of uh, bright hot spots on it and his overall uh, luminance value should probably come down. And the big blurry nest at the bottom left is a distractor which should just be brought down so that it is not, maybe a stop, stop and a quarter, so that it is not so prominent in the image. Um, but overall, just a potential for a really high score in this image with just a few changes. Any other comments? Okay, it scores an 84. Next up is the Brilliant Dragonfly. The Brilliant Dragonfly. Tim, I think yours flashed. I saw a flash, but it went so quickly, I did not get a number. How about now? I got it now, thank you. And it's staying on the screen. I don't know why it flashed off so quickly. The score on this one is 80. 80. And Larry? I, I scored this an 80. Um, I think it has potential to go higher, but I, um, Let's start with the uh, dragonfly itself. It's very detailed in the wings. Uh, it's very sharp, but I lose that sharpness in the head there. Um, as I go up to the top of the dragonfly, it, it just looks soft there. Um, the border, I think, competes with the detail in the dragon wings. I don't think you want to add detail to a border when you've got a lot of detail in your subject. Um, the color harmony is, is good. Um, the, um, uh, the presentation itself is good, except for, the, like I said, that, that uh, detail in the, uh, uh, in the dragonfly. The border completes with the detail in the dragonfly. So um, that's it. Any other comments? Be real careful when you have so many different points of attention. Uh, I think the dragonfly is fine. It's just all these little cross pieces of, you know, tree parts uh, that are brighter. And then you have this presentation that is so strong, uh, you lose track. Of, what am I looking at? If it wasn't for the title having to do with the dragonfly, you would really have a hard time, you know, trying to find some uh, center of interest. I would add one thing, Tim, if I may. Um, all of those cross stalks of perhaps it's bamboo plant, I don't know, they all should be darkened down. And the maker may be aware, but I think there is a program that might help the out of focus head. It's called Topaz Focus AI or Sharpen AI, and it can often help you recover that out of focus head. So just be aware of that. I went to Africa and found a lot of my pictures were front or back focused and deleted them all. <laughs> and then somebody told me about 
uh, the focus AI and it's like, Ooh, I could have saved them. <laughs> oh man. It's worth knowing about, but definitely sharpen down all those bamboo shoots or whatever they are. Okay. Scored an 80. And last in the nature category is Virgin River Below Narrows. Say that Virgin, one more time. I'm trying. <laughs> it's tough. Virgin River Below Narrows. Score is 80. And Tim. Okay, I gave this a 78. Um, you've heard me say it a few times already tonight, time of day. And I, I mean, I would love to be in this position. Uh, and again, I don't know which direction I'm looking, whether it's north, south, east, or west. But time of day, because what happens when you get more directional light, um, particularly lighting up the beautiful fall foliage there and get a little bit more detail on the um, on the sides of the cliff bring the sky down just a little bit but for me this is where a neutral density filter is absolutely necessary to give you that feel that soft motion of the water instead of at a higher shutter speed where you've stopped it and so you have all this kind of it's almost like a texture effect on the water uh, again I just think again morning or evening, whatever would be best suited for this, because it's a beautiful scene, you know, framed by the trees and then the, the re, you know, rusty color cliffs. Uh, the sky is a little bit bright, but uh, time of day and a neutral density filter would make wonders of this. Okay. Any other comments? Okay, the scored an 80. That concludes our nature category. Next up is the open category, and we have close shave, close shave. Eighty-three is the score. Eighty-three, and Daryl, you're up first. Okay, close shave for the Tin Man. Apparently, I was. I guess I always think of this kind of an image as being in the commercial category, and um, uh, as in advertising this razor. Uh, it seems to me very well done. The background is quite mesmerizing and takes my attention a lot. So perhaps some of those brighter bits of the metal shavings in there could have been toned down. Uh, the background maybe is a little too bright. But the razor itself is really well done, well captured, and uh, a beautiful bit of photography here. I scored this an 85. 
and I'd be interested to hear what the other judges uh, scored it and why. Okay. Larry, we'll start with you first. Yeah, I, I scored this in the 80. Um, I, I wanted to go higher on it. It's just that these uh, specular highlights in the shavings kind of distracted from the uh, uh, shaver it's, uh, razor itself. Um, and then, uh, yeah, it looks like it has good shadow detail. We've got uh, all that's good. The uh, But like I said, that specular highlights of and busyness of the shavings, uh, the coils of metal there, uh, just distracted from me. I, I, ke I keep looking around uh, the image. The stroke around there is a little bit bright also. You might want to tone that down, maybe about uh, half of what it is there. Um, and uh, that's about it. I scored it an 80. Mr. Tim? I was at 83. Um, the background doesn't bother me at all because I can see detail in all of those bright shavings. What I held back on is the lighting on the straight razor is just a tad hot. Um, what's really important when doing something like this is the brand name on the handle is kind of a kind of blocked out. And um, the client wants to see their name without exception. So to me, the lighting on the, on the straight razor is just a little bit off. Um, you know, it requires a lot of diffuse lighting and uh, to eliminate that big black, you know, mark on the handle. Um, not difficult to do, but that, that's the problem. I would have been much higher if that I'd been able to read the label completely. Okay, thank you. That scored an 83. That is the end of our open category. Next category is photographic artist. And guide images are encouraged, but not required. And do we need to go any further detail for photographic artist? No. Good. No. I'm too lazy tonight to do it. First image up is my trip to the dentist 2020 style. My trip to the dentist 2020 style. Hmm. Score is 79. 79. And Larry, you're up. Uh, I scored this as 78. Um, I, I just, um, for me, losing too much evidence of a photograph by this uh, effect that's uh, applied here, um, I would like to see a little bit less of the effect, uh, actually a lot less. Um, the only thing that I see that looks like it's in uh, focus really is the uh, end area of the needle and the uh, needle itself with the drop there. Uh, everything else is just is just too much effect applied. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. Next, we go to the photojournalism category. And just a reminder, you can't alter anything. You can't add or subtract anything using the clone stamp, et cetera. And basically, you're telling a story with dodging and burning and spot removal. So first image up is cannot mask joy. Cannot mask joy.
78. 78. And Tim? I was at 77. Um, I mean, from a technical standpoint, it's nice and sharp, well exposed. It's just that there's so much going on here that if you, and again, I'm just comparing the left side and the right side. Um, if he had just turned her slightly, maybe all that bright spot in the background would have gone away. And I know that in the photojournalism category, things happen, are supposed to happen spontaneously. Um, I would have cropped it a whole lot different to, to minimize all those bright spots in the background. Um, interesting story in her eyes, but um, it, it didn't, doesn't come across the way uh, the title would lead me to believe. Okay. Any other comments? Yes. Um, I think this is probably in the wrong category. I'm not seeing a peak action here unless this was a, a candid shot. Um, on her skin tones, uh, you can see her eyes are in focus. Her, uh, her uh, camera left eyebrow is in focus. But then around the bridge of her nose, there's some strange things going on with the, the skin itself. It's all uh, muddied there. And also up on her forehead, there's an area that looks like it's in focus where you can see some of the, uh, I guess they're you know, like freckles in her uh, forehead there on uh, camera left. And then it goes into some strange kind of uh, a blurry effect, muddy, or on the right side, um, and it's, I don't think it's a focus thing because her hair, which, which is adjacent to that, is in focus. So there's some type of uh, uh, dodging and burning there that's been done, uh, uh, actually burning, it looks like, that uh, is uh, totally distorted her skin tones. Um, and then uh, everything that Tim said. Okay, any other comments? Yeah, the score to 78. Next up is I'm ready for my close up. I'm ready for my close up. Score is 77. 77. And Daryl, you're up first. All right. So this is, for me, a, a cute and amusing uh, shot and a sense of humor to it. Um, and the title works to that effect as well. I uh, scored this a 78. Uh, I didn't see enough impact here. Uh, in this photojournalism story uh, to bring it up into the merit category. Uh, a little confusing be where the photographer's lens is mostly blocked out and uh, the goose's head is a bit dark there when it really is, I guess, the feature of the story. So for those reasons, I uh, scored it a 78. Any other comments? I guess we also have <laughs> that time of day issue, which uh, Tim brings home so well. Um, harsh light, but uh, that's what happens when you go out and shoot PJ, huh? Yep. Judges, anything else? Okay, score to 77. And last in the PJ category is second chances. Second chances.
score is 81. 81. And Mr. Larry. Um, well, first of all, I, I think that we're still in PJ, right? Um, yes, we're in PJ. I, I think that this is the wrong category for this image. I think this should be in uh, maybe portrait environmental or something. Um, the, uh, the, but uh, other than that, uh, it's a great image. This guy's eyes are in good focus. You can see, um, you know, kind of the emotion part of the story there. I, I, I think that's uh, one of those tattoo tears under his left eye or camera right there. Um, and uh, most people know the significance of that. Um, the, um, I kept looking at his nose and I kept thinking that his nose should be the tip of his nose area should be in better focus. And I don't know if it's that's, that's because some type of a, um, a burning was done there. Maybe there was a specular highlight on his nose that was burned down and, and it uh, caused that to give a blurred look. But uh, other than that, it's, it's a nice image. Uh, but I, again, I think this should be in the uh, portrait environmental category. Okay, any other comments? Okay, that's scored in 81. And next category is Portrait Studio. And the first image is My Weapon, My Life. My Weapon, My Life. Score is 79. 79. And Tim. Okay. Um, my weapon, my life. If he has said just the title, I mean, it's, it's a very dramatic picture, I think, uh, from a, you know, it's a well exposed. But it, I think the title threw me off because if he had just said my weapon, I can almost believe what I'm looking at. But there's no light on his face, and it's obvious that they even looks like they burned his face down. Um, when you say life, I want to see the life, and I don't see it here. Um, you know, this looks like it would be, you know, something you could probably go back and do again, but um, show the face. You know, sh maybe there's something in that face that tells us more of the story. Also, I think that the presentation is a little bit distracting. It's like you're looking at a, an old frame print, and I'm sure that was the, um, you know, the, the feeling that the maker was trying to convey, but uh, it's uh, kind of a, uh, the lighting here is, is probably the part that I don't get the most. But if you look closely at the face, it's obviously been burned down. And um, you know, so I, again, I scored it a 78 and I really feel like I was being generous in this case, because I think you're, out, you're in line for a really interesting story, but, um, it fell apart with the loss of the face. Okay. Any other comments? Okay, score to 79. And last is the straight out of camera category. And it's going to be Broccoli Field Sunrise. So straight out of camera. Here we go. Broccoli Field Sunrise. Oh, broccoli, okay. Broccoli. Broccoli. So the straight out of camera, you can't crop, you can't do anything? Um, you can crop, but you can't do any alterations except dust spotting. Gotcha.
No adjustments to lighting, no burning and dodging. Score is 81. 81. And Daryl, we'll let you go first on this one. All right. I uh, scored this image an 82. I am curious about straight out of camera, Mike. Does that mean if you shoot a raw image, you cannot adjust it to bring it up to a JPEG? You cannot adjust any settings on the raw image. It has to be straight out. Okay. So if you shoot a JPEG, that would be okay? To have, you know, not to either. If you shoot a raw, you just click done or open image. Uh, if you shoot JPEG, then you get what you get, just like any okay. other image. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I like this image. It's got a soft pastel quality. Uh, it certainly doesn't look straight out of camera. I'd have to work hard to make an image look that good. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fog back on the the trees on the right. The soft muted um, fields of broccoli, not overexposed. The little highlights on the leaves uh, just add to the depth and richness of the image. And the sunrise or possibly sunset um, is just really quite lovely. I love the angles of it, um, streaking across from left to right. And uh, I, I, it looks almost like a painting to me. I'm quite impressed that that's straight out of camera. I scored this image in 82. Okay. Any other comments? Yes. Um, I scored this in 80. I really like the image. I love the, the pastel tones. The um, And everything's in focus all the way through from right down at your feet all the way to those mountaintops. Uh, the only thing that was a little distracting to me was that um, the horizon line there seems like it's high on the right. And uh, if you can correct that, I think this image would be uh, even better. So. Okay. The only thing I had to offer to it, this is past the category. This is just looking at the picture. Um, I would cut about half of the bottom off and give myself a real long, strong panorama almost, correct the horizon line, but that you've got a beautiful picture in here. Um, I, but I understand the category and that's fine. Uh, and I scored it an 80 for that, but for a final photograph, just to present it, it's got about half the bottom off, and um, you've got an amazing photograph here. All right, that scored an 81, and we got a couple of housekeeping things to take care of, so let me shop, stop sharing the screen. And... Okay, and we'll go back into sharing screen in a second. See so if I do this right. Okay, in the animal category, we have a tie between Pelican Airways and Vote for Me. Pelican Airways and Vote for Me. We have a sunset showing, Mike. You only have one showing? We have a dog and a sunset. Okay. What are we looking? That's there should what he be, said. Pelican should be, Airways. There's should be this. two images showing up, the dog and sunset with pelicans in the background. Oh, I see. Okay. That this is right. animal category. Animal category. Okay. And we had a tie between these two and we need to break the tie. The vote is for the Pelican Airways. 
I'm I like the uh, dog. How about you, Larry? I'm going with the Pelicans. Okay. Okay. And let me close that one. Da 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 Okay. And for those that mark their pictures with stars or colors, the reason why we don't do that is because I'm going to sort them by stars and colors to get the final product down for best of categories. You go by score in the best categories or? Yes, sir. Okay. And I'm off right. Hopefully, you can't see my screen. So, that's why. Okay, that's not going to work. I guess I'll do it this way. And go to share screen. And can you guys see all of the images? There should be seven of them up there. Seven, yes. So, okay, oh, so we got see a column on the right, Mike. You might want to hit your tab key. I don't think that'll make a difference, but I will give it a shot. Nope. Let me do, oh. hang on. Oh, you're in bridge, that's why. I'm in bridge. Are you sure there's, the tab doesn't work, huh? Yeah, let me. I think if you kill the preview panel, that should do it. I was trying, well, I got previews, the one with them all up. I was trying to kill content, but They've gotten rid of the. Check folders there. Your folders are on the left. And on the right, it's content. Right, but it's not in the. Well, where you, you can click on the, I think, on the edge of the column on the left edge. Here, and let's, let's, let's do this. There you go. Drag it right out of there. A little there more. Well, I got to leave room so I can delete as you guys delete them. Oh, okay. So, okay, judges, it's all yours. You know what to do. You've been there before. Are we picking the uh, best three or? Best of show. Just so the best one. My vote is for the Milky Way. Likewise. I, I and third that motion. Well, that makes it easy then. Milky Way is great. You can't take a little time and think about it there? Well, we can talk about the roses and. Uh... That is. Uh oh, sharing is paused. Try that again. Okay. Let's go back to bridge. Share. And you have the best of show, which is The Living Galaxy by Jeannie Sparks. Right. Very good. 
I better see that in competition coming up. And you online, so congratulations. Yes. Are you listening, Jeannie? You can unmute yourself now. Oh, there we go. <laughs> that helps. Oh, my husband's zooming in and out of the. <laughs> I'm doing the happy dance. You're in the happy dance. <laughs> Yes, thank you. I, I was there when she took that shot, and I, it was amazing. I was there when she took that shot, and it was really a beautiful night. Where? Loved it. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the background because you can't see him. Whoops. Yeah. You tell him where we were because um, I know who we went with. But yeah. Uh, they're not here. It's video settings. Um, Jeannie, where were you? Well, that's a good question. Um, just out, outside of... Just north of Los Olivos. Yeah. Is Cheryl still here? Cheryl, where, where were we? Cheryl Decker. In Fox and Canyon, just north of Los Olivos. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Up on the uh, hill overlooking Firestone. Yeah. Three winery. Mi yeah, three miles north of the 154. Yeah. Very nice. Cheryl and Larry picked out the spot, and we had a little uh, Santa Maria Camera Club jaunt out there. So I think six of us went, something like that. And you didn't invite me. <sighs> well, you should join the Camera Club. That's it. <laughs> I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> you can come to the next one. Just come down from Oregon or Idaho, wherever you Utah, is. Colorado, wherever you're at. Somewhere. Okay, oh, moving yeah. on. Moving along here, we have animal category, Pelican Airways by Mr. Scott Clark. All right, Scott. Nice job, Scott. Very good. Oh, thank you. Um, I think um, probably the um, success of that shot was that um, I kind of pre-set it all up. I pre-composed it because I could see the Pelicans feeding out off the coast and so i just kind of sat there and waited and i thought well if i get lucky if they fly back towards the other way then i could possibly do them and one of the judges mentioned you know the timing of it and um yeah it was lucky timing um i think at about three frames in i managed to get this one with the seven birds and <laughs> not getting one obliterated by the sun very nice image. Really beautiful. Thank you. Poster. And we have Grandma's Roses by Janine Bagnuda. Wow. Very nice. Very yeah. Nice. I have a question because on my screen, it looks very dark, but I'm thinking it's my screen. Does it look on the dark side to all of you? No. Not on mine. No. Okay. So it's, no. I just need to calibrate this laptop. Okay. Yeah. That'd be a good Thank idea. You. It's a, actually, it's my grandmother's teapot, oh. but I felt like the roses were kind of more of the show. So I had to change the name. <laughs> the only thing that I would suggest is in the upper right corner, some of those darker blossoms are almost suspended because you can almost barely see the green stems. So a little bit of, light bounced in there i think would have opened that up a little bit okay thank you that's very beautiful i was wondering uh, if that was your uh, grandmother's laptop <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> no just her teapot <laughs> uh, that, that would be her great grandmother's laptop <laughs> <laughs> um could, could i ask a favor michael you can ask. <laughs> I hope you'll respond. Can you go back to my um, my picture again of the galaxy? So Michael actually read the name as the living galaxy, but I gave it the name the giving galaxy, like the giving tree. And I'm wondering from the judges or anyone which name they like better, living galaxy or giving galaxy? I like living. I'm not quite sure what giving galaxy means. I, I kind of know what living galaxy means. Well, the, have you heard the, read the book, The Giving Tree? So I was kind Sorry, of tying off of that, The Giving Galaxy. Is that a photography book or? No, well, it's, a, it's a children's storybook about a tree. Oh, I figured you got the galaxy and the tree together. 
Oh, that, beautiful. Uh, Shel Silverstein book. Yeah. Yeah, I, I haven't read that in 30 years. Jeannie, <laughs> 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 uh, I think the living worked out well. <laughs> the living worked out better than I'm going to change the name of that. And um, you guys commented on the um, the lightness on the hill. I actually was trying to make fog looking there. There was some brightness already from whatever the city was or the so. town. And I just kind of blurred it to make a, a fog, but it doesn't show up as well on my screen right now as it did on in Photoshop. I think it ended up pixelating a little bit or something. I don't know. Yeah, it, it doesn't add to the image. That, I would say that. And then on your uh, first stroke line, the inner stroke, uh, right at the horizon line, looks like a little whoop -dee right there. You might check into that as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see that now. Okay. I didn't. I didn't point that out to the judges so that. Uh, Good thing. <laughs> What's a whoopie? It's just a little extra line here that oh, shouldn't be there. Right on. Yeah, I see that. That area there. Don't let the judges change their mind. Okay, shouldn't have brought it back up. They should have brought it back up. <laughs> Forget it. Forget Never it. ever bring an image back up. <laughs> I, I know from personal experience. Something good happens. The second. Okay, let's end this meeting now. <laughs> back, I think I'm Tim was there when one of my images got brought up from a seventy-five, and yep. people in the back room were saying, "Oh, it's going to go up! It's going to go up!" I said, "No." I won't mention the judge's name, but he tried to challenge it down to a 69. Wow. <laughs> wasn't, that wasn't pretty. Mean. Okay. In the nature category, Feeding Time by Janine Bagnuda. Beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This, uh, these little guys had set up shop in the tree in the courtyard where I work. And uh, so... That's a hummingbird. I had some fun with them. That's a yeah. great it's shot. It. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. It is. How long did you have to wait to get that shot? Oh, I was out there for a little bit, a few different times. I couldn't be out there too long because I was supposed to be working. <laughs> 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 but I thought it was interesting. If you look closely, you could actually see what she's bringing up to give the baby. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> there's the light coming through. <laughs> but I know it's kind of hard unless you zoom in to actually see it, but. Um, Is that an yeah. insect or what? No, it's, it's, it's liquid. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, there we see it. Oh, yummy. <laughs> she's yeah, taking good care of that baby. Yeah. There had actually been two, and the first one had fledged it. We were a little worried because it had left a tad bit early, but um, this one uh, enjoyed being a one and only for a while. Oh, <laughs> that's sweet. Those are tiny Beautiful. birds, too. That's incredible. Yeah. And the light coming through that jaw, yeah. Yeah, wicked cool. Okay, close shave in the open category by Mr. Scott Clark. Very nice. Oh, thank you. Um, a friend of mine from the shop works at a machine shop and um, I had gone over there and they, you know, have these machines and stuff around. And I saw these shavings and I'm like, those are really cool. I need to think of something to do with that just to do something. And so um, I had just been to my barber shop, and so hence the idea was spawned, and I thought, well, I'll just take a picture of a razor on top of the shavings, although um, I think one of you guys, I think Daryl brought up the fact that it didn't dawn on me that, yeah, this could be kind of a cool commercial shot to kind of think of that a little bit. Um, so good idea. I think in the future, I'll bear that a little bit more in mind when I'm working with stuff like this, so thanks for the comments. You bet. Okay, and if I can get this to work. In the photojournalism category, Second Chances by Scott Clark. Uh, once again, thanks. Um, yeah, I probably should have put it in portrait environmental. I'm a little out of practice. Um, 
one of you guys, I think Larry picked up on the fact that, yeah, he's got the teardrop tattoo, which signifies prison time. So we get some interesting folks floating around the store. So it was an environmental pep, uh, portrait. This was not done in the studio. It was just sitting outside with him. And so um, at any rate, yeah, I appreciate the comments. So it's, it's always a work in progress. And last but not least, straight out of camera, Broccoli Field Sunrise by Cheryl Decker. I really like this one. Uh, thank you. Um, there she is. It was, it was taken with it was taken with an iPhone while I was on an early morning run. Wow. That's why it looks like a JPEG. It's beautiful. Is that fair with having all that software manipulation by the iPhone? Of course, that's my husband saying that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're probably safe being it was the only entry. <laughs> well, then, that's how you get that great depth it's, it's of field. That's a cool shot. Yeah, Something very right cool now. shot. I like it a lot. Hold on. You get Thanks. that great. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. with the iPhone up here, all the way back to there. Yeah. It's all clear. And... Yeah, sure. Well, cool. Thank, Thank you guys for, for judging tonight. A great group of judges. Yeah. Thank you. Very, very precise great. and a little wrong on the animal category, but I'll accept it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Daryl, for voting for my dog. Oh, excellent dog. <laughs> or not my dog, but. Anna's dog. Thank you. Thank um, you. Great judges. Yeah, thank Standing. you, judges. Thank you for the redemption on my pelicans. <laughs> and congratulations to Jeannie. And congratulations, yeah. Jeannie. Yeah. Beautiful and shot. Yeah. Thank you, Cheryl and Larry, for finding that spot on the hill to shoot from. That's the last time we're taking you anywhere. Yeah. <laughs>